In the JMS Tech Wizards database assignment, you were supplied some data on a small company. There's about four employees, technicians, and there's about half a dozen or so clients. And then you also need to keep track of work orders, work that was performed. So one client can theoretically do jobs for many different customers or clients, and a particular client might have work done by two or more different technicians depending on the nature of the work. So in this case we need a table to keep track of the technicians, a table to keep track of the various clients, and a table to keep track of the various jobs performed. So my initial work here in this blank database is going to be to create the tables with the appropriate fields. Then I'm going to establish the relationships enforcing referential integrity. Then I'll go to the individual tables and enter in the data supplied or mock data. After that's done, then we'll create a couple of queries, then create a couple of reports. First, I'm going to create a new blank database. And I'll just leave it at the default name, database3, that's fine. And I'm right in the design view. Actually, this is a data sheet view. I'm going to jump over to design view for the first table. I'll go ahead and call this technicians. And I'm going to create a technician ID. And I will use text for that since the data provided already gives me a technician number. And then I'm going to enter fields for last name, first name, street, city, state zip code and the technician's hourly pay rate. These are the fields for my technician table. Notice all of them are text fields except for the technician rate which is going to be in currency. Technician ID is set as the primary key. I'll save that table, create tab, table design, and now I'm going to create a table for the various clients. There will be a client ID, which I'm also going to use text since client IDs are provided and they're ultimately going to have text and numbers in them. I'm also going to have fields for the name, the street, the city, state, zip code, and the phone number for the clients. Okay, these are the fields for my clients table. All of these fields are text. I'm going to go ahead and set client ID to be the primary key and I'm going to save this table calling it clients. Now, I'm going to make the uh, Create tab, Table Design, I'm going to create the Work Orders or Jobs Perform table. This is going to keep track of a unique job ID, the date of the job, the client involved, the technician involved, the number of hours for the job, and a brief description for the job. And these are the fields and data types for my Jobs Performed table. Notice that my job ID is an auto number, meaning I'll have access generate a, an ID for them. Uh, job date is a date time data type. And this is important. Client ID and technician ID are text data types. If you recall, on my technician's table and client's table, those primary keys on, on those respective tables were text. And since I'm going to be relating these tables together by these particular fields, they need to share the exact same data type. Uh, job hours, that really should be a numeric field so I can calculate totals and things like that. That's a number field. And job description. Job ID will be the primary key. And I'm going to save this table as jobs performed. Now I haven't entered any mock data. And this is a good habit to get into. After you create your tables and establish your fields with the appropriate data types, before you enter mock data, establish the relationships with enforced referential integrity. So, I'm pretty sure I've got my tables created accurately, so let me go ahead and close my three tables, head over to Database Tools, and then to the Relationships window. I'm going to display the three tables I have available to me. There we go. Now, Jobs Performed is truly going to be a junction table between these two, clients and technicians by themselves, have a many-to-many -many relationship. One client can work with many technicians. One technician can work with many clients. Jobs performed will break up that many-to-many -many relationship and hold data unique to the particular job. I'm going to relate them with each other. Client ID to client ID. Primary key to foreign key. I'm going to enforce referential integrity create. Technician ID in the technicians table to technician ID in the jobs performed table. 
enforce refer referential integrity and create. There we go. So now we have one to many relationships between the clients and the technicians table to the jobs performed table. Now that relationships have been established successfully amongst my three tables, I'm going to close the relationships window, of course saving the layout, and now I'm going to enter in some mock data. So I'll go ahead and start with my technicians table, and I'm in data sheet view. I'm not going to create forms for these, but I'm going to go ahead and enter in some fake data for my technicians table. This is the mock data for my technicians table. I've got their ID numbers in, which is which are text fields, but ID numbers, their names, address, and their current hourly pay rate. I'm going to save this table, and now I'm going to open up my clients table and enter in some mock data for my clients. Now I have mock data for my clients. Now I'm going to open up my jobs performed table, and I'm going to enter in mock data for jobs performed. Okay, so this is mock data for um, this small company over a week. Notice uh, each job ID has a unique ID. I just used auto number, so Access created those for me. I enter in some job dates, and of course a particular client. Sometimes you'll see the client used uh, multiple times because a client can use the consulting firm multiple times. Also, you'll see the same technician number from time to time. And a technician can certainly perform more than one job. But the job has a little you know, small description and indicating the number of hours. Uh, obviously, if this was more real to life, we'd probably have more fields in here, like the, the start time for the job, perhaps a more detailed job description, a notes field where the uh, technician could put in some follow-up notes. Now that my tables are related and they contain mock data, I can start to create some queries for them and ultimately create some reports displaying the data in a nice format. I'm going to go and close my three tables saving changes were necessary. And now I'm going to go to create and I'm going to create a query in design. Now one of the first queries that I've um, asked you to do in this particular activity is to create a query called holiday bonus that displays the technician's name and the appropriate bonus amount for their holiday. Um, and the bonus rate is calculated at eight times their hourly rate. Okay, so that's the first query. Now since this query is simply asking for information like the technician's name and a calculation based on their pay rate, I'm only going to need my technician's table. And that's important to remember. If you're only creating, or let me word it like this, only include tables that have fields that you truly need. So don't include more tables than you need. That'll make it a little bit tougher. So I'm going to display my technician's table and close this. And my first query is going to have the technician's first name, their last name. I'm going to go ahead and put in their technician pay rate. And in this fourth column, I'm going to right click and zoom so I have a little room to work. And I'm going to create the new field that's going to calculate their holiday bonus. The new field name will be called holiday bonus colon and now I type in the formula. In this case I'm taking an existing field which I enclose in square brackets. Technician rate times 8. Click OK, tab away, run it. There we go. So I have the name of the technician, their normal hourly rate, and what their holiday bonus is going to be. 8 times their hourly rate.